Thanks for clicking on the video. I'm back here in the woods. I've got my axe, my knife, and my saw, which I normally take to the woods. And I've got my dog. She's over there, probably rolling around somewhere about there. I've also got something that I, well, let's just say I went fishing last night. Yeah, I went fishing and I actually caught something. So my plan today is to cook what I caught last night in the woods, but before I do that, I need to light the fire. Let's turn this into a fire. Now this might look like just a normal twig or a branch or dead piece of wood. Trust me, it isn't. It feels really heavy. What's inside this is one of my favorite fire starters when it comes to fire lighting or making a fire in the woods using natural materials. This is magical and we need to turn this into a fire. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take this, head over to the fireplace and turn it into a flame. So you can see I've split this open and it's just, well, there's a different colour. It's almost like a dark red, dark orangey, kind of reddy colour. And this smells incredible. I wish you could smell this. This is fatwood. Fatwood is the resinous remains of a dead, dried out or rotten pine tree. The wood rots away and what's left is this really high in concentration well, level of resin. And that there, it's almost glass-like. It's really hard. It smells incredible. This is great for fire lighting. I'll show you how. So what I'm doing is I'm just working it down just to get lots of small shavings. Oh, my stick, my, my base isn't very stable. Look at that. That's a really good bit of fat wood, that. Really good. And the trick now, once you've located the fat wood within your branch, the trick is to use a sharp knife or a tool of some sort, it could even be a piece of flint, and just create lots of these shavings. These shavings, little bits you can, you can bunch up, this is what we need for fire lighting. Whereas this, you can just see how hard it is. It's really hard, really dense, it smells incredible. It smells, it almost smells like a, a freshly built sauna. You know, with the pine wood, beautiful smells. That's exactly what this is, fat wood. Really good stuff, it's really heavy. So that should be enough, but I'm just gonna add to it, add a little more of these shavings. Okay, so now that we've got the shavings right there, all we need now is a fire steel. I got one of these, brand new out of the packet. You've probably seen these before. Well, I'll just show you how they work. You strike onto it and it creates sparks. These sparks are around 2000 degrees and what you have to do is land these sparks onto your pile of shavings of fat wood for an instant flame. Little merch plug, these are available on the bushcrafttools.com website. Feel free to go and check them out. Right, let's get to it. So you want to pin it down. It can take a few strikes sometimes. And we have a flame straight away. I'm going to take that over to the fire. And now I've got some really small twigs that I've just collected. Place a few of these on it, just carefully.
So many people often struggle to find fat wood. Now there's lots of trees that will produce resin that you can light a fire with, but it's knowing which ones are the best. For me, it's got to be something that, well, there's a few of them in this woodland, pine. So pine logs that are rotten, that you see on the ground, those are what I look for. I don't normally go to a tree and expect to saw a branch off and find fat wood. I'll normally look for pine woods, I look for dead logs on the ground. And that's where, like I mentioned earlier, the wood rots away. But the resin, that, that doesn't rot away, it doesn't rot away in a hurry. That is what you want, dead rotten logs on the ground in a pine wood. And now what you want to do is just look for the branches that come off the main trunk. You can kick them off, you can saw them off, you can break them off. They'll feel really heavy. That is why, because they've got this really thick amount of high concentrated pine resin. And that's exactly what you want when you're looking for fat wood. So we have flour, and then we've got two beaten eggs. I collected these eggs from my chickens this morning. We've got two eggs in there, and then breadcrumbs. These are panko breadcrumbs. You might be wondering, what am I about to cook? Well, I did say I've been fishing. I got back at three o'clock this morning, and I caught my favorite thing to eat out of the sea. Yes, I love prawns, I love crabs, I love lobsters. You know what? And what I really love are these. And these I caught this morning. I was there from, I was there for a few hours, squid. So I've got five squid in here. You can't get fresher than this. Super fresh squid, still dripping with ink. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna prepare these squid. I'm gonna remove the heads, rem remove the guts, rinse them out, make sure there's no ink. And then I'm gonna cut them down into rings. And we're gonna do woodland calamari. So these wings, I, I normally remove these wings and then cook them separately. And you can just pull them off. So put that there for later. Get rid of this. And then there's a bit of this skin left over, which you can eat, but I tend not to. Okay, now one more thing, we need to take this out. Have a look at this. It's like alien-like. It looks like plastic, but it's not. I've forgotten what these are called. It could be called a, is it a quill? I'm not sure. If you know what this is called, let me know in the comments. 
That we don't need. This we need. So now we've got this squid, it's nice and clean. A little bit of ink inside it, but that's fine. And then I'm just gonna cut it into maybe about half a centimeter rings, like this. Okay, that might be one centimeter, but something like that. And then there's the head. So I'll just get rid of anything behind the eyes we don't want. And we've got these long tentacles. I like to just cut these in half. Get rid of that little brainy bit. Don't want that, don't want that. It's actually the beak. So the beaks of squid, they, they're a little bit like parrot beaks. You can see there, it's like they're really sharp. If you ever get bitten by a squid, it's just gonna take a chunk out of your finger. Anyway, we don't want that. Keep this, probably take that down into there. So all I need to do now is drop these into the flour, mix them around. Then I'm gonna drop it into the egg and then into the breadcrumbs. But before I put it in the breadcrumbs, I'm gonna need some oil. I need some hot oil. I want it to be about 175 degrees Celsius. And to, to make sure I've got that temperature, I've got a little thermometer so I can test the temperature of the oil before I put the, uh, the squid rings in. So while we're waiting for the oil to heat up, I'll just talk you through how I caught these squid. So the way you catch these squid is by using a lure. They're called a squid jig. They're a special squid jig or a special squid lure designed for squid. Any other lure will have a hook and barbs on the hook. These haven't got hooks. If you look very closely, you can see they've got lots of prongs on, on the bottom of them. And those prongs are what the squid grabs hold of. Bear in mind, this, this lure is an imitation prawn. So the squid comes along, grabs this imitation prawn, and now he can't pull, well, he can't release himself from the barbs. At which point, you need to make sure you keep winding, keep the pressure, because as soon as you let go, or give the, give the squid any slack in the line, the squid will let go and not swim off, leaving you with just the lure again. So, I'm there on the pier. I've been there for about half an hour and suddenly I caught one. And then shortly after that, I caught another one. And then I caught another one. And yes, I caught another one. I ended up catching five in total. So I've prepared one squid. I'm gonna cook that now. I'll see how that goes down. If I'm still hungry, I'll cook up the others. You know, squid fishing is so much fun until you get squirted by ink. Okay, I know it's not very bushcrafty, but I have this. And this is gonna tell me exactly how hot the oil is. Because the last thing I want is for the oil to be too cold, that way they won't cook and crisp up, or for it to be too hot. If it's too hot, well, it's just gonna burn the food, isn't it? So that's on, that's on. We're looking for 175 degrees Celsius. Fifty-one, sixty-three. It's going up. Seventy-three, eighty. So at the moment it's at eighty, and it's not hot enough. So we'll have to wait a few more minutes.
So we are currently at 176, 177 degrees Celsius. The thing about cooking squid is that you only want to cook them for about two to three minutes until they go golden brown, just like these ones at the bottom. So these were the first ones that I put in. So probably, I'm probably about 30 seconds away from these being cooked. Look at that. That's the half a head with all the tentacles on it. Just look at those. So now, so I've just taken a little bit of lemon, cut it into a wedge, place that there, and it wouldn't be calamari without some sweet chilli sauce. spring onion and then some of this from the garden this, this morning. We've got some parsley. Look at that. Yes. Let's try it. So good. Fresh, crispy. Beautifully cooked. Mm. Sweet chilli, little bit of spring onion, parsley. Mm. Oh, delicious. Have a look at this. <laughs> oh. Wow. That is a thing of beauty. Mm. <laughs> The thing about catching a squid is, in this country, the squid are only here for a few weeks. It's working out when they're here, and as soon as they're here, well, as in, as soon as they've arrived on the coastline in the south of England, where I live, I go down pretty much every, every weekend, if not twice a week. Because there's nothing better than going out, catching food, and putting it in the freezer. So then I'll have food for the next, well, not that I'm gonna eat squid every single day, but it means I can put some squid in the freezer, pull it out, defrost it overnight, clean it, turn it into rings, and do exactly what I've done here in the woods. So tasty. Mm, mm, mm.
What? Uh-uh. Not for you. Oh, let's try some with some lemon. So as for the breadcrumbs that I've used, I've used panko breadcrumbs. But you can also use normal breadcrumbs, or if you've got some cornflakes, you can crush the cornflakes and just replace the breadcrumbs I've used with cornflakes. Mm. So good. And I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that commented on my last video. So I came to this camp and I took down the old camp, well the shelter. It wasn't looking too good, the wind had got to it, the weather had beaten it down and it was seconds away from just being flattened by mother nature. So I thought I'd come along, repair the camp and I asked you guys watching, I asked you guys what should I do? What could I use the materials for that I've taken down? Bear in mind, this camp here, this is a camp that the scouts use weekly. Thousands of scouts have used this camp. I've, and I've always thought it could do with a little bit more seating. Many comments in the comment section commented, well look, if there are scouts using it, then why don't you just make it even bigger and better and allow more seating, therefore more scouts to sit around the fire for storytelling, for crafts, whatever they do at scout camp. And it just allows more people to sit down around the fire and I think that's what I'm gonna go for. So unfortunately there's not much building in this video, but it was more of a, a catch up, a catch and cook up. And um, yeah, to thank you for the comments. I am gonna come back here over the next few days. If you do have any more comments or ideas for this camp, let me know in the comment section. Okay, I never normally do this because I don't normally give my dog human food, but I think I'm gonna give her one of these squid rings. I am hoping, well, I can't see anything being poisonous. I don't think, I don't think the squid's gonna be poisonous, or the breadcrumbs, uh, or the flour, or the egg. But what might not be good is the salt that I put in. Okay, I only put, well, I put a little bit of salt in, but I don't think there's gonna be a high concentration of salt in one of these. So, let's give Amber one. Amber, leave. <laughs> right, so for everyone that comments saying, why don't you ever feed your dog? Um, it's because my dog only eats human, sorry, only eats dog food, not human food. Was that good? And now she just wants another one. That's the problem with giving her human food. All you want to do is eat, eh? You're such a Labrador. Anyway, she's not getting any more. I'm finishing the rest. Well folks, that is it for this video. Thank you so much if you're, watch if you're still watching. I didn't do much building today, if any. It was more of a catch up with you guys, a bit of a catch and cook. And also to thank you for your suggestions, like I've just mentioned, when it comes to obviously the, the shelter building and the improvements that, ca that can be done here. Also a big thank you to everyone that has been on the website and purchased one of these. Again, they're called a fire steel. You can find them on bushcrafttools.com. There'll be a link below. Feel free to go and check them out. Yeah, so on that note, thanks again. Hope you enjoyed this. See you next time. Goodbye.